Reader's Digest condensed version. Do you know how hard it is for somebody like me to read all the way through the CARES Act and try to figure out the right yeah. decision to make or to fill out freaking paperwork or whatever? That. It's just not my, it's hard. And, and, and you got to do hard things and you can do hard things. Absolutely. Hard Here's another good quote, hard things are hard <laughs> and, and you still have to do them. Don't, don't worry about doing them. Just, just do them. Just, just do it. And this is not to say that it's going, listen, even as we're saying, just do it. It's not to say that it's, it's, um, that you won't feel anything because I, it, the truth right. is, the, the truth is that like, like any small business, um, like many small businesses, I certainly, um, and, and Renee and the entire executive team at, um, as I have a tail wagging next to me with my dog. I love it. Your secretary, your secretary's stopping in, trying to get into the conversation. Yeah. My secretary I love it. asking for my attention. So what, you know, it, it was, it was very hard. Some of the decisions that we had to make, um, in the oh. short term, right. Gut -wrenching. You know, it is yeah. gut wrenching in, re in reaction to in reaction to this industry and the market conditions we knew we had to make some tough decisions that were very very hard yes. right and and yeah. i and i think that you know as we were talking about at, for the women at embed series where they you know our gender parity is 50 percent on our executive team and imagine we've had a few telcos in which yeah you know as people are speaking about some of the decisions that we've had to make you know voices have cracked and there have been some tears but there's a power in that there's a power in being able to say listen these are the tough things that we're vulnerability gonna Mm -hmm. Absolutely. These are the tough things that we're going to have to do. And ha and this is what I love. Mm -hmm. and, and at, at one point we were all scattered, right? We were literally when the world turned upside down in the middle of um, March, uh, when the uh -huh. world turned upside down, we were all traveling. And so I was in Dallas um, in the baggage claim. Okay. I'm in Dallas in the baggage claim and I've taken this phone call and, you know, we have people calling in from Australia and also from um, Dubai. And so literally, you know, there are some tears that are flowing as we're talking about the decisions that, are, yeah, that we have to make and some of the actions that we have to take. And what I, what I found really powerful was that in that moment, the entire team came together and we said, hey, we're with you. We are in the trenches with you. Yes, this is tough. Yes, this is hard. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get through it because it's temporary. And so I think it, yeah. I love some of these gems that you just mentioned about controlling the narrative controlling how you react to it. Hard things are definitely hard, but if you have that network of people who are going to kind of lift you up and keep you strong, then you can and you will get through this. Sarah, I think one thing that's real significant in this time too is that we're all doing it. So it's, yeah. you know, here in the United States, um, when 9-11 happened, it was significant, you know, and it was a national event, but it wasn't as if, everybody was as directly touched as the 3,000 families that, that lost loved ones and in New York City where it happened. It was still a little, it was a little bit different. This right. touches every one of us. You know, I got this immune compromised husband at home. You think I'm going to be getting on a plane anytime soon? Absolutely not. And I could, I could be depressed about that or scared about that. But you know what? I'm, I'm not going to be that. That doesn't serve me. That doesn't serve him. It doesn't serve my company as a leader in my company. I, I can't, I can't afford to be scared. I'm responsible for these people, and they don't need to be scared. Right you now, and I feel that for for our customers, for our constituents, if I'm scared, if I'm if I'm spreading the fear, what good is that? Yeah. It serves uh, no useful purpose at all. You're absolutely correct. There's no there's no productivity that there's nothing productive that actually comes from fear and give and giving into it. It's listen. All of us have those moments, right, in which we we worry or we have or we we have some fear. Yes, and and I do too. Yes. But then it's how we actually navigate through it. And so for anyone who's watching this, right, who has, you know, who has been like, who's had those really bad days, because I, I saw a few yeah. of our customers that were like, hey, I've been in this for three weeks and I just, you know, I'm just done with it. Um, who are uh -huh. so frustrated. They're trying to keep their businesses afloat. Um, sure. And, and all of that is completely natural, especially, you know, like you said, reading through some of these government guidelines, right, on, oh. on applying for relief. And then the worst part is seeing something like that, a notification that says, if you've made this application incorrectly, you can only apply once. 
right? And oh, I know. I have it. I have a little bit of anxiety about the fact that I haven't gotten notification, right? That I'm accepted yet, and I'm checking every few minutes. So I'm not. I'm not saying that it's not okay. I'm just saying what else could be true, right? I'm going to use Nancy's narrative and say, I hear you. I get it that that's scary. I, I hear the anxiety. And what else, what else could it be? Right. What else could we do? What could we work on? What could we do now, right now, yeah. instead of that? You know, are we, or, or do we need to wallow around in it for a few minutes right. and then move on? Right. 